10 killed, 7 injured as building collapses in Ibadan. Police arrest 8 suspects for kidnapping others in Kasina. Taraba tricycle operators block Jalingo Highway in protest over police extortions. On the foreign scene, Spain begins three-day mourning as torrential rains kill 95. It's the news update on Trust TV. Hello and welcome. I am Aisha Salihu. The news in detail will begin with a sad development. Ten bodies have been recovered from the debris of a collapsed story building at Moonloyal <laughs> area of Ibado, Bioyo State Capital. Some persons were also confirmed injured in the collapse that took place on Thursday. The general manager of the Oyo State Fire Service, Yemi Akinyinka, in a statement noted that the service got a distress call around 2 a.m. from residents of the area that a building had collapsed, trapping many under the rubble. The police also confirmed the development in a statement, saying adequate security has currently been in place in the area to prevent hoodlums from taking over the incident scene and also protect the lives and property of other residents within the jurisdiction. The police statement added that investigation is ongoing at the moment to unravel the possible circumstances that could have led to the incident. <laughs> And to security matters, eight suspects have been arrested by the Casino State Police Command in connection with kidnapping, armed robbery, criminal conspiracy, culpable homicide and other related crimes in this state. The police spokesman in the state, Abu Bakar Sadiq, who paraded the suspects before the command headquarters on Wednesday, noted that the command arrested 16-year-old Nuhu Haruna of Fenza village in Dutsima local government area in connection with a suspected case of culpable homicide. Haruna was arrested following a misunderstanding with 40-year-old Rabi Haruna of the same address who happened to be his stepmother. The suspect allegedly used a stick and hit the victim on her stomach, which eventually led to her death. The suspect had, during the investigation, confessed to the commission of the offence. The command has also arrested one Abubakar Nasir, alias Haro, in connection with a suspected case of criminal conspiracy and kidnapping. The command said the suspect, who was earlier convicted in a case of rape, was fingered in an ongoing investigation about a case of criminal conspiracy and kidnapping, hence his re-arrest. Away from that, the Nigeria Governor's Forum has expressed empathy for Nigerians on Thursday morning, acknowledging the severe economic challenges in the country, while voicing optimism that President Bola Tinubu's reforms would soon yield positive results. Imo said Governor and Chairman of the Progressive Governor's Forum, Hope Uzodima, disclosed this while reading the communique issued at the end of the forum's meeting held in Abuja at the early hour on Thursday. The chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum outlined the governor's position during a media briefing following the NGF meeting in Abuja. He noted that governors acknowledged the importance of these measures in securing the nation's energy resources and improving the efficiency and resilience of NNPC's production and supply chain, as well as to ameliorate the sufferings of Nigerians. Other issues highlighted while reading the communique includes NGF partnership with African Medical Center of Excellence aimed at improving health outcomes and accessibility for all Nigerians, collaboration with the DSS to safeguard the nation, among others. The tricycle operators, popularly known as Kekena Pep Riders in Jalingo, blocked the major highway in the Taraba state capital over a light extortion by the police. The blockage lasted over two hours. 
were said to have disrupted free flow of traffic within the city center. The report. The chairman Kekena Pebriders in Jalingo, Nasi Ugaraba, who spoke shortly after the protest lamented that some traffic police officers have been harassing members of the group under the guise of wrong parking and other excuses all get who was extorting money from them. Gaba noted that those who fail to give them money will be arrested, charged, and taken to the station. We were in the office when we heard that the four traffic police officers were involved in a fight with our members at a roadblock. We went there to settle the case, but the place was too rowdy and crowded. Everybody around that place knows those traffic officers because we report them severally to the DC, and he has promised to take all the necessary action to stop this from happening. Another branch chairman of the Keke Riders, Saad Isiaka, found that the attitude of some security personnel who use their uniforms as a tool to violate the rights of the citizens. What happened at the roadblock today is just unfortunate. The attitude of security personnel who always come to extort us via unnecessary taxes is not fair. They caught my boy yesterday around NNPC filling station and collected 1,500 naira from him for no reason. Yes, our keke riders did not do well, but the security personnel are the cause of everything. They don't wear uniform, but will instead disguise and enter the keke, arrest the rider without taking us to the station, they will only ask us to settle them, dear true brides. When we refuse, then they will call their people from the station to come and arrest us without any reason. Some eyewitnesses described the altercation as unnecessary and called for an amicable solution to the fracas. What happened today at the roadblock is that one of our riders parked behind the car that parked in no parking area and the traffic did not accost the car but entered the keke and asked the rider to bring something because he parked at a no parking area. But the rider tried to explain to the traffic police that the place is a parking place since there was no sign displaying no parking. The disagreement led to an altercation that saw other riders blocking the road. It took the intervention of the military to settle the scuffle. To be frank, these people are not fair to us. The security personnel will come and enter your vehicle in Mufti, waiting for you to drop your passenger. If you mistakenly stop at no parking area, he will arrest you and ask you to do something and go. If not, they will take us to their station and arrest us there. I don't know much about what happened, but I heard that one keke driver wanted to park beside the highway. In fact, he did not even stop and the traffic police entered the keke and asked the rider to bring something. When he refused, the fight ensued and other riders in the area joined their colleagues to beat up the officer before military officers arrived and calmed the situation. The union of the keke riders as well as operators called on the security agencies to reduce the taxes they imposed on them to enable them make profit from their trade. I attempt to speak with the police public relations officer of the Taraba State Command proved abortive. And to matters of politics, ahead of the November 16 Undo State Governorship election, the Independent National Electoral Commission has announced that candidates in the race will sign a peace accord on November 8, facilitated by the National Peace Committee, led by former Head of State General Abdul Salami Abubakar. The signing aims to ensure candidates pledge to a peaceful and violence-free election as campaigning reaches its peak in the final two weeks. The INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, said this during a quarterly consultative meeting with civil society organizations in Abuja on Thursday. Yakubu also flagged potential hotspots in Ondo State, noting that the commission is coordinating with security agencies to prevent violence Yakubu highlighted the importance of contributions from civil society organizations emphasizing their role in promoting peaceful elections. He called on CSOs that observed the recent Edo governorship election to promptly submit their reports. He noted that nearly 72% of registered voters have collected their permanent voters card, adding that INEC has scheduled a mock accreditation exercise in selected polling units for November 6 to test result uploads on the INEC result viewing portal. Cross River State Independent Electoral Commission has engaged no fewer than 9,843 ad hoc staff to conduct the 2nd November 2024 local government areas and wards election. Chairman of CrossEC, Ekong Edet Boko, disclosed this 
when they distributed sensitive electoral materials at their caliber office Thursday morning for the conduct of the said election. Boko explained that three of these ad hoc staff will work from each of the 3,281 INEC recognized polling units across the 18 local government areas of the state. He added that 460 supervisors, 18 returning officers, and 196 coalition officers were trained and will function during the elections, displaying samples of the sensitive electoral documents before IPAC officials and newsmen. He debunked the speculations that the results of the elections were already written. The Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center has expressed profound concern over the recent Federal High Court ruling that restricts the Central Bank of Nigeria and other financial institutions from releasing monthly allocations to the River State Government. In a statement signed by Sislak's Executive Director, Comrade Awal Musa Rapsanjani, he warned that judicial decisions of this nature pose a serious threat to Nigeria's democracy, economic stability, and the public's confidence in the judicial system. Raf Sanjani called attention to the growing perception that some judicial actors are compromising the integrity of Nigeria's judiciary. The statement emphasized the role of international accountability, noting that judicial officers should remember that organizations like Transparency International and the World Justice Project rank judiciary systems globally. Nigeria's position on the Transparency Perception Index reflects the need for transparent governance. Justice Joyce Abdul Malik of the Federal High Court Abuja has dismissed the suit filed by oil producing communities in Bayelsa and Delta State seeking to nullify what they allege is the illegal appointment in the Niger Delta Development Commission. The communities had approached the court, seeking a nullification of President Bola Tinubu's appointment of Chiedu Ebye as chairman of the NDDC. In their suit, the plaintiffs argued that Ebye was not qualified to head the board of the NDDC since he was not from the oil-producing area with the highest quantum of oil production. Delivering judgment, Justice Joyce Abdul Malik held that given Section 24, subsection 2 of the NDDC Act, the plaintiffs had no local standi. The Nigeria Immigration Service has announced the launch of a phased contactless passport renewal system set to begin in Canada on November 1, 2024. This new system allows Nigerians to renew their passports online, greatly reducing the need for in-person visits to NIS offices. The NIS shared the announcement on Wednesday through a video posted on its official X account. Following the rollout in Canada, the service will expand to the United Kingdom, United States and Italy on November 15 and by December 1, it will be available in Nigeria and other global locations. According to the NIS, the phase rollout is designed to enhance accessibility for Nigerians worldwide, allowing citizens to renew passports seamlessly from any location without visiting NIS offices. The NIS stated that Nigerians will be able to renew their passports by downloading the NIS mobile app available on Google Play, the App Store, and the Windows Store or by visiting its portal. While the app is not yet available on Google Play or the App Store, the NIS noted that starting November 1, Nigerians in Canada are expected to access the app on these platforms and begin using the service. And to other stories, South Africa says it would revoke the citizenship of Miss Universe Nigeria contestant Chidima Adeshina, who was at the center of a row over her nationality in the famed Rainbow Nation. South Africa's Department of Home Affairs announced the decision in a parliamentary committee on Tuesday after Adeshina and her mother missed a deadline to justify their citizenship status. 
Born of a Nigerian father and a Mozambican mother, Chidima Adeshina holds dual South African-Nigerian citizenship and faced xenophobia when she tried to compete in the Miss South Africa beauty pageant. She's now representing Nigeria in the Miss Universe Contest beauty pageant underway in Mexico. Chidima Adeshina, 23, withdrew from the Miss South Africa pageant in August amid a torrent of abuse over allegations she was not South African, which prompted an official investigation into her citizenship. Adamoa State Government, in collaboration with UNICEF, has launched the Adamoa State Social Protection Policy and Custard Implementation Plan. The event, held at the Government House in Yola, aims to address the challenges posed by climate change and insecurity which have exposed citizens to various forms of hardship. Gibson Swadigo reports. Commissioners, permanent secretaries, and other stakeholders convert at the conference hall of Government House Yola, Adama State, to launch a social protection policy and costed implementation plan, monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning plan in partnership with UNICEF. Launching the policy document, Governor Fintry, represented by the Commissioner for Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Reintegration, Haman Deram, noted that the social protection policy seeks to reduce poverty and improve the well-being of all citizens through deliberate interventions. He emphasized that the policy will implement 24 measures in eight key areas of the social sector, including education and health care. The Adama State Social Protection Policy aligns with the State Development Plan of 2020-2025 and the five objectives of global sustainable development goals which are directly related to social protection. The Executive Chairman of the Adama State Planning Commission, Mary Paninga, praised the Governor for laying the foundation for protecting the less privileged and vulnerable. She said the initiative demonstrated the government's commitment to transparency efficiency and accountability in addressing socio-economic hardship and insurgency in Adamao State. This is why together with this document there's the implementation plan attached, making it very, very, very easy, simple and seamless to ensure that the implementation takes place together with the monitoring apparatus. Director General of Paweka Michael Zira announced the governor's approval for the disbursement of another trench of the Fintry wallet. Gibson saw at go. Trust TV News, Yola. And to developments in business, the Major Energies Marketers Association of Nigeria has assured Nigerians of petrol availability and cautioned citizens against panic buying. In a statement on Wednesday, Mehman boss Clement Isong said the association has a significant stock of products in its tanks saying there were no issues with access to the stock. Isong said the clarification became imperative following several inquiries from the press regarding the perceived tightness in the petroleum supply market, while assuring that Neman, Neman does not envisage any outages of petroleum products in the immediate future or in the near term. He urged the public not to panic buy petroleum products as supply efficiency continues to improve and logistics optimization begin to set in. He added that members shall continue to do all within their power to optimize their supply and logistics costs and efficiency to ensure the highest level of availability, accessibility and affordability for their customers in the increasingly competitive environment. And away from Nigeria, Spain began three days of mourning on Thursday as rescuers equipped with drones raised to find survivors of the country's worst floods in a generation that killed 95 people. Flags flew at half mast on government buildings throughout the country after a Mediterranean storm unleashed torrential rains and torrents of mud-filled water that swept away people, cars and homes. Emergency services backed by more than 1,200 military personnel combed mud-caked towns and villages on Thursday to find survivors 
and clear roads of debris. Government ministers have warned the toll is likely to rise with many people still missing and some areas remaining inaccessible to rescuers throughout Wednesday. The death toll is the worst from floods in Spain since 1973, when at least 150 people were estimated to have died in the southeastern provinces of Granada, Murcia and Almeria. Still on the foreign scene, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump took their nail-biting White House race West on Thursday, seeking supremacy on border security and aiming to woo crucial Latino voters days ahead of the U.S. election. Pop singer Jennifer Lopez will bring her star power to the stage for Harris in Las Vegas as the candidates battle through the seven swing states expected to decide the next president. Meanwhile, Trump has scheduled an interview with Arizona in Arizona with ex-Fox News host Tucker Carlson and Raleigh in Nevada. Both campaigns have been sidetracked in recent days after controversies stemming from a remark by a warm-up speaker at a Trump rally, which initially blew back against Republicans before a damaging gaffe from President Joe Biden. Harris made political hay from the comedian calling the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage, winning the backing of Puerto Rican celebrity Lopez, rapper Bad Bunny and singer Ricky Martin. But she then found herself on the defensive after Biden appeared to call Trump supporters garbage, prompting the Democratic candidate to state that she disagreed with criticism of people based on who they vote for. A senior Hamas official on Thursday said the group rejects any proposal for a temporary halt to more than a year of fighting in Gaza and insists on the lasting ceasefire. Mediators seeking to broker a Gaza ceasefire are expected to propose a truce of less than a month to Hamas, a source with knowledge of the talks told AFP on Wednesday. Meetings between Mossad head David Barnier, CIA director Bill Burns and Qatar's Prime Minister in Doha, which concluded on Monday, discussed proposing a short-term truce of less than a month. The proposal involves exchanging Israeli hostages for Palestinians in Israeli prisons and increasing aid to Gaza. United States officials believe that if a short-term deal can be reached, it could lead to a more permanent agreement, the source said. Hamas said it had not received any proposal so far, adding if it gets such a plan, it would respond. It, however, reiterated the demands the group has been insisting on for months, which is a permanent ceasefire, withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza, the return of displaced people, sufficient humanitarian aid to Gaza and a serious prisoner exchange deal. And finally, sports. Ruben Amarum is expected to be confirmed as Manchester United's new manager on Thursday after the club reached an agreement with Sporting Lisbon. The Athletics said the 39-year-old would stay with the Portuguese league leaders for their next three games, including next week's Champions League match against Manchester City. He is expected to take charge at Old Trafford during the November international break with his first game set to be United's away trip to Ipswich on November 24. Reports say the Premier League club has paid, had paid Sporting an extra 1 million euro over and above his 10 million euro exit clause for an early release. Sporting issued a statement to the Lisbon Stock Exchange on Tuesday confirming United were willing to meet the release clause. United pulled the plug on Eric Ten Hag's two-year reign as manager on Monday after a 2-1 defeat by West Ham left them 14th in the Premier League. Amarum quickly emerged as United's number one option. United caretaker boss Ruud van Nistelrooy oversaw a 5-2 victory against Leicester in the fourth round of the League Cup on Wednesday. 
And on that note, we've come to the end of the news update on Trust TV at this hour. Remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentaries. I am Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching.